Hydra is a framework that is developed by Facebook Research. Um, it is uh, used to configure ele elegant application or elegantly configure applications. And it's really growing in popularity, especially among machine learning researchers, because it helps you configure design and con configure projects like machine learning experiments. Hydra Zen is then a open source library that we have been developing at MIT Lincoln Laboratory, which helps add the Zen of Python to using Hydra. We provide some really convenient Python-centric functions for creating configurations for working with Hydra and add some really rich new features on top of the baseline Hydra framework. So what do Hydra and Hydra Zen actually do? Um, first of all, they standardize the process of designing your project. And when I say project, I mean both your rapid prototypes, the kind of work that you're only going to deal with for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, and also your mature projects, things that you're going to release publicly or deploy. Um, you can uh, this standardize the process for both form factors. And what exactly are we standardizing? What I mean is this helps to standardize the process of making your code configurable. We want to make sure that each of our projects are configurable from a in single interface such that I can configure deeply nested parameters within my program. So if I'm doing like a machine learning project, I might have some algorithm that has within it some machine learning model that has within it some layer and some parameter that I want to configure. I want to make sure that we can tunnel down and configure that specific parameter from the interface. And I also want us to be able to identify entire components of our program that we want to be, uh, make configurable and swappable. So maybe I'm dealing with data set A and I want to swap it out for data set B, or I'm working with some baseline algorithm, but now I'm working on some uh, enhanced improved algorithm that I want to be able to swap out conveniently. We're going to have a configurable interface that allows us to, uh, uh, to swap those things out wholesale. Hydra also helps us standardize the process of making all of our work reproducible. It will leave behind for us a breadcrumb trail in the form of a serialized YAML file of how we configured our code when we ran it. And lastly, it enables scalable workflows. So this means that I can configure and launch multiple instances of my program, either locally in serial or in parallel, or even across multiple nodes on a computing cluster, like on AWS or Azure. Um, Hydra provides really powerful launchers and sweepers for making short work of this. OK, so enough saying let's do. Let's actually make something. We're going to create some toy code. It's going to be called gamelibrary.py. Um, we'll use HydraZen to design a configurable interface for this library. And then we'll define a task function that uses the library's code. Once we have all of these things, we'll be able to configure and launch our program. So we'll, we'll do that. And then we'll see that it's actually really easy to go back and add a command line interface to this program as well. Um, as I mentioned before, Hydra really helps with reproducibility. So we'll go and follow that breadcrumb trail along and see we really can reproduce our results exactly from this program that we created. Um, and then we will go and identify some of those some of those groups that we want to make wholesale configurable and swappable. All right, um, so let's go ahead and make some of that toy code. This is the complete content of gamelibrary.py. It consists of two things, a character class. Um, the character class just has a name, a skill level, and an optional inventory. And then that like that wrapper method there just makes sure that for this uh, presentation, when we print out our character instance, it just prints out nicely. It, it displays the name, level, and, and inventory. So that's the only reason why that is there. And then we have a simple inventory function that takes in an amount of gold, a weapon or, or item, and a costume. And it just returns a dictionary with those things. And I'll note, I have type annotations or type hints here. Some of you may or may not be familiar with these. Um, I'm using these here for documentation purposes, and I want to emphasize that type hints are not required to use HydraZen. You never have to have these in your code in order to use HydraZen. But if you do have them, we can provide runtime type checking uh, if you have those hints. 
OK, so to make sure that we're on the same page, let's import character and inventory from our game library and just use them real quick. So we'll take the inventory function, and we'll make some stuff. That stuff consists of 12 gold, a stick, and a red cape. And then we're going to make a character. The character's name is Bowser, is level one. And we gave Bowser that stuff. OK? Great. So we have some library code, some toy problem. And now what we want to do is create a design a configurable interface so that we can configure any aspect of character. And notice that the interface to character is hierarchical in nature. At the top level, we have name and level. And then the inventory itself has configurable components. So we want our configurable interface to reflect the hierarchical interface of character. All right. So in this code, we are using Hydrazen to generate those configurable interfaces. The real start of the show here is Hydrazen's builds function. What you do is pass builds one of your library's classes or functions, and it will automatically generate a configurable interface for that object. So at the top here, we have builds inventory returns inventory conf. That's a configurable interface for inventory. And then car conf is a configurable interface to character. But something really important to notice here is that you can nest these configs. So I created a specific inventory loadout starter gear, 10 gold, a stick, and a tunic. And I included that as part of the character configuration. So now any default character will start off with that inventory. But the real key here is that you can compose or, or that you can nest configurations. And that allows us to have that hierarchical interface that I was describing before that we desired. And then the top level config for our program is really trivial. We use Hydrazen's make config function. And this just says we have one field named player, and that player is described by that character configuration. All right, well, so we have a configurable interface. Now we want to define a task function that actually uses that configuration. So the task function takes in our uh, config, and we call Hydra's instantiate function. Now, this will actually recurse through our configuration and make everything. That's the reason why that function in Hydra's Center was called builds. It describes how to build an inventory. It describes how to build a character. Instantiate goes through and actually builds those things. So it instantiates that inventory according to the config, and then uses that to and the name and the level to instantiate the character class. So object obj.player is just that specific instance of the character class with that name, with whatever name, level, and inventory we want. That's all it is. Um, and then beyond this, we can use this character instance as we see fit. Here we print it out, we write a log file, we could call other Python functions, we could launch an executable. This, um, this task function ultimately does anything we want. It just needs to take in that configurable interface and do something with it. OK, that's all we have to do to have a program that can be configured and run using Hydra and Hydrazen. Let's, let's do it. Let's launch three different instances of our program. So we pass Hydrazen's launch function, our top level config, our task function. And here we say, OK, our player's name is Frodo. So it's Frodo has the default level and in inventory. Now we launch a program and say that the player's name is Frodo, has a level two default inventory. And here we configure the same thing, but we also configure specifically the robe within the inventory of this character. And this is where the, a lot of the magic is happening. Notice that we're able to elegantly configure a nested field within the character instance, player.inventory.costume equals robe. This is indicative of how we can configure anything in our program. We can access deeply nested parameters in this intuitive dot name syntax to access and set that parameter's value. So this starts to get at the configurability that it gets standardized by using Hydra and Hydrazen. So to rewind a bit, how does Hydra and Hydrazen standardize our project design process? Well, it tells us that we need to do two things, design a configurable interface to our program, and then define a task function that actually gets configured by that interface and then runs whatever code we want to run. 
Now, what does it look like to actually add a command line interface to this program? That launch function that I showed before was a Python function. So we can already configure and launch our code from within Python. How do we do the same from a command line interface? Hydra makes short work of this. Um, you take your config and you register it with Hydra's config store. You give it the name of the config and where to find it. Take the task function, um, decorate the task function with hydra.main and tell it what the top level function uh, config is. And then, then at the bottom there, that just says, hey, if we run this script, make sure to execute the task function. That's all it takes to add a command line interface to our program. It's really simple, basically no boilerplate code. So now we can go ahead and run our program, configure it from the command line interface. So this is exactly what we did before with launch, but now from the command line. So hopefully you're starting to be convinced that Hydra and HydraZen really do help you write a configurable program, and it helps to standardize that. But how does this help with reproducibility? Well, every time we run our program, Hydra will serialize for us a com complete uh, a YAML file that serves as a complete description of how we configured that specific instance of our code. So let's read through this together. We'll read from the bottom to top. So what this says is that the robe, stick, and 10 gold is what configured the game library.inventory function. And then that's the inventory within this config. Then that inventory, level two in Frodo, is what configures a specific instance of game library.character. And that is what the player is in our program. Right, so this is a complete description of how we just ran the code. Well, given that it's a complete description, we can actually use this to rerun our program in the exact same fashion as before. So Hydro, by default, will save the results of our program in a timestamp directory, which can be configured. We can, instead of by hand saying the player's name is Frodo, level two, et cetera, we can just give it the config.yaml file that it saved from our last run and get identical results. So you could imagine if you're running some um, computer simulation, doing some data analysis, or running an experiment, and you have some results from four months ago, and you're trying to remember, like, how did I get that again? You just consult the config.yaml file. And it is a complete detailed description of exactly how you ran that program. And if you need to reproduce those results, you can just feed that back to your program's interface. OK, so um, now let's go back to our code and see that we can make entire groups of our program configurable and swappable. Here I'm going to make specific inventory loadouts, so starter gear, advanced gear, and then my absolute favorite, hard load gear, in which you have zero gold, your weapon is your inner thoughts, and you're wearing rags, which is like going to be a tough time when you're playing this game. But we create these um, specific in inventories and then we register them in Hydra's config store under the group player slash inventory. And then we give each, each one an appropriate name, starter, advanced, hard mode. And then we can just refer to these by name from our program's interface. Similarly, we can create entire player configurations. Let's say Brinda and Rakesh both really like our game, and they have saved character profiles. Um, Brinda is level 47. She wears a cape has a flute, and has 52 gold. Similarly, we can register these under the group player. So we have a base character, Brenda's character profile, and Rakesh's character profile that we can all refer to by name now. What does it look like to use this? Well, before I can, uh, you know, here we have a uh, player name Ivy. Now we've given Ivy the hard mode inventory layout, or, or loadout, with this simple uh, player inventory equals hard mode. We can load Brinda's character profile using player equals Brinda. Really intuitive, nice. Or we could load Brinda's player profile and this time give her armor instead of a cape. So reflecting back on the kind of code that you might be writing, you might have a configuration for data set A and data set B and data set C. You can just swap those out by name from the command line interface or from the launch interface. You might have a baseline model from a research paper that you read, and then your version of your model. You can refer to, you can make pre-built configurations for describing those models, and then swap them out by name in your experiments. 
So what do Hydra and HydraZen actually do? Um, I hope I'm convincing you that they standardize the process of designing your project, make a configurable interface, define a task function that gets configured by that interface and runs your program. Um, hopefully you're somewhat convinced that this is really um, uh, doable for rapid prototyping. It takes almost no boilerplate at all to incorporate this in your code. And also Hy Hydra is a well-loved framework and HydraZen is well-tested. These are good to use for mature projects as well. And I'd like to point out that if you and your colleagues are all using this, a benefit of that is you know how to reproduce each other's results. You know to look for each other's config.yaml files to understand how you ran each other, how uh, one person ran their code. And you understand the paradigm of the configurable interface and the task function. So this really helps uh, prevent people from having to reinvent the wheel for configurable and reproducible projects. And then lastly, we haven't really gotten to the scalability aspect yet, we, but we will see that come into play um, in the next example. But rest assured, Hydra provides these really powerful launchers that allows us to take the kind of program that we just saw and run multiple versions of it um, using different launchers, inclu including Ray and Slurm and different things like that. Okay, this is PyData. Enough of this game library talk. Let's do a PyData example. We are going to use one of my favorite libraries, PyTorch Lightning and HydraZen, to run some boilerplate-free machine learning experiments. And it wouldn't be a talk without a neural network. We are going to train the world's simplest neural network, a single-layer neural network that is just meant to fit the cosine function between negative 2 pi and 2 pi. So this is just going to take in a single number, pass it through the neural network, and we hope that the neural network returns cosine of that number. That's the ideal. We're actually going to train multiple versions of this neural network using different numbers of neurons in the layers and different batch sizes, the amount of data that we pass during the optimization or training process. So this looks like a lot of code compared to what I've been showing you, but in the world of machine learning, this is nothing. And there's nary a for, a for loop in sight. So it's also like a Christmas miracle, even though it's not Christmas yet. Um, at the top, we have our single layer neural network and then a PyTorch Lightning module that just describes how to run our model, how to create our optimizer for our model, what it looks like to update our model from step to step, and how to load our data. So the Lightning module takes care of all of that. And then on the right, we're using HydraZen to make config configurable interfaces for all of those things. And for all of you Hydra users out there, this is where you get to see a little bit of the HydraZen specific magic. Here, we're actually creating partial configs. Like the Atom Optimizer, we don't have access to the model weights at config time. So we actually want to only partially configure Atom, not fully. That's just an aside. So here, we're creating a configurable interface for our optimizer, our data loader, our neural network, the lightning module, our trainer. How long do we train this for? Do we use any GPUs? And then this is the top level config for our experiment. It, consists of a configurable interface for an optimizer, data loader, lightning module, trainer. And then also we provide a configurable seed, which we'll use to seed all of our random number generators. Our task function is really straightforward. Um, seed all of our random number generators, use Hydra's instantiate to actually instantiate our neural network, our lightning module, optimizer, data loader. Create the lightning module itself. Fit our neural network, this is, the act, this is the single line that it takes to train the neural network on the data, evaluate the fully trained neural network on the data, and then return the, return the trained model along with the final fit. All right, um, that's all it took. Uh, let's appreciate all of the code on the left is all of the machine learning baseline. The code on the right is making our configurable interface with HydraZen. And then this is the code that actually uh, trains and evaluates our model. So now we'll use HydraZen's launch to launch four instances of this. How do we launch four instances of this? By using the multi-run option. We specify that we're going to run two different batch sizes and two different number of neurons in the layers. And Hydra's, Hydra will run all four combinations of those. And it will automatically separate out and organize the results independently of each other of those four experiments. So with this single line, we're actually training four separate neural networks. 
And these are the fits for the neural networks. Um, if you're curious, uh, the layer 100 neuron layer with batch size of 20 did the best. But obviously, we can do better than this. This is just fitting cosine on a very small domain. But this is just to show an um, uh, example of this in the world of machine learning. So this gets at some of the scalability that I was mentioning. You could also provide a launcher and train these models in parallel. So reproducibility, this is the uh, config.yaml for one of the experiment runs that we did in training this model. Notice there are parameters here that we didn't even explicitly set. Like this documents the beta parameters in our optimizer, the epsilon that we used. This is a, this, it even includes the uh, seed that we used for a random number generator. So this completely details how we ran one of our ex one of our four experiments. Okay, uh, with the time that I have remaining, some of Hydrazen's bells and whistles. We won't be able to get up to all of these. First, I mentioned you don't have to have type annotations, but if you do have type annotations, we can inject runtime type checking in all of your interfaces. In this example, we have a really fancy type hint, positive int, that says not only should age be an int, it should be non-negative. We're going to use a wrapper called validates with bare type, and that will change the behavior of builds. So builds will add an additional step to the instantiation process for all of our configs that adds runtime type checking based on their interfaces. So this uses the bare type type checking library, which I'm a big fan of. Um, so what does this look like? Instantiate this config with age of the int 12, no problem. Pass it the word 12 as a string, bare type will roar. It will raise an error saying, hey, this value does not match the type annotation. And you pass it a negative integer, that's also no good because our type hint says positive integers. So you can now type check the configurable interface to your very precious experiment. We provide support for bare type and Pydantic. So all of you folks out there who like Pydantic and have wanted to use it with Hydra, we've built the bridge now. And this is actually a completely general feature that I'm showing. This is not specific to type checking. This is a functionality injection system via Zen wrappers. So you can provide whatever wrappers you want and they'll compose during the instantiation process. So you can easy, easily add things like schema validation and affect the actual functional behavior. I'm gonna speed ahead a little bit, but I'll, I'll tell you that when you use builds, it will also validate itself upon construction. So if you wanna make sure that your configs are valid, um, just make the configs with builds and it will raise errors if you misspelled parameter names. You can even just import these in your te test suite and then in your test suite, it will revalidate your configs. Really cool. And there are more bells and whistles of Hydrazen, but not enough time. We have nice docs that we just rewrote. We have tutorials for folks who are completely new to Hydra and Hydrazen. We'll step you through all of the things that we just discussed here, step by step. And Hydra and Hydrazen are both on GitHub. Please consider giving us some stars. It really helps with discoverability. Hydra is already like through the roof popular. But Hydrazen is a very new project. So if you think this is cool, um, it helps uh, get new users uh, to find the project. And then please follow me at rsocal at both GitHub and Twitter. Shoutouts, Hydra for laying the foundation for absolutely all of this, the Hy Hy Hypothesis Testing Library, which we use to rigorously test all of Hydrazen, PyTorch Lightning, and bare type, the bare metal type checker. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much, Ryan, for this presentation today and uh, for all your contributions at PyData Global.